Good morning, good morning. Hey everyone, welcome to Daily Drop-In where the Teach Better team is live every single morning, Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. Eastern. We have a new guest this morning. It's Wednesday, we have recommendations for you, good news stories, holidays, all the things. We'll also continue with our theme this week of trying to give you tips and tricks on how to end your classroom um, classroom hour with success with students. We have a lot we're gonna dive into. Um, we'll be right back. Hopefully you go fill up your coffee, say good morning in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. It is Wednesday, November 3rd. It's going to be the best Wednesday that we've ever had. So let's get started. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Daily Drop-In. We're thrilled for you to start your morning with us, or even if you're tuning in after the fact, uh, we're thrilled to be connecting with you today. We are joined by Damien. Damien, it's so great to have you here. I know we connected on Twitter. I'd love to have you introduce yourself if you don't mind. Sure. Good morning, Ray. Hey, good morning, everybody. Happy. It is Wednesday, right? <laughs> Wednesday, November 3rd. Yes. Yes, it is. All right. Um, yes, good morning. So I am a principal. And I'm a principal in the southwest suburbs of Chicago. My uh, my school is in the Oak Forest area. Um, it's Ferrick Education Center, and we're part of District 146. And 146 uh, encompasses actually three municipalities. Uh, we have uh, schools in Tinley Park, uh, Oak Forest, and Orland Park. And uh, so I've been there. This is my fourth year as a principal there at Ferrick. And uh, prior to that, I was a principal at Meadowland School, which is again in the south, uh, south suburbs of Chicago. Um, that was District 125. It was like 119th in Kedzie there in Marionette Park, all sip area. And uh, I was there for five years. So this is my ninth year as a principal. And prior to that, I was a music teacher for 10 years. Um, I taught music at... Um, District 128 in Palace Heights. I was a band director over there for uh, seven years. Uh, I taught uh, elementary and middle school band, which was a whole lot of fun. And prior to that, I was uh, a high school classical guitar director. I was at Curie High School in Chicago, uh, right there on 52nd and Pulaski. Um, and that's what I did when I got out of college. So um, before I became a teacher, I obviously was in school, but I played music on the weekends and put myself through school. I went to uh, Roosevelt University, downtown Chicago. And uh, prior to that, I went to um, uh, Wright College, a community college on the north side. Um, and uh, before all of that, I was I, I was growing up in Ireland. I grew up in Ireland and uh, Limerick City in Ireland and um, came out here after I finished high school and uh, put myself through college. And so that's kind of my journey, working my way back. Oh my gosh, talk, um, about, talk about quite a journey. Holy <laughs> moly, I have so many questions. First of all, celebrating that we're neighbors up bright and early this morning. Yes, ma'am. We're in Chicago, we're in central time zone. So while we're welcoming our community that we're streaming at 7 a.m. Eastern, it's 6 a.m. for us. So yes, it is. That's, yes, a, it is. that's an early morning, but holy cow, not only with your background in administration and your time as a band director, which is an incredible space to enter into the education field with, and then to also be growing up in Ireland, like, holy moly, what was your inspiration when you were living in Ireland to come to the Chicagoland area? Um, my father was already here. And uh, so he was here. And um, so that kind of opened the opportunity. Um, at that time, you know, uh, in Ireland, opportunities for for uh, for kids moving into pretty much anything were pretty slim, mm -hmm. um, especially the area that I wanted to get into, which was music. Um, so I was either going to have to go to England uh, to to pursue more of a formal musical education, or I was going to have to uh, come out here to the United States. Wonderful. So um, since my since my father was already here, I thought, well, let me 
let me go out to Chicago and see how it goes. And, and uh, you know, at that time, I figured, well, if if uh, if it didn't work out, I could always go back. I was 18 years old, um, and uh, stuck with it, and have been have been sticking with it ever since. So, love it. Do you ever get to travel there. back? Do you still have family there? Um, we haven't been back now in a very long time. We haven't been back since my since before my kids were born. Um, I have uh, I have three kids. Uh, my oldest is 15. He is a sophomore at uh, Lincoln Way East High School. He plays football over there at Lincoln Way East. Um, and uh, I've got two little girls as well. My oldest daughter is in uh, seventh grade. Uh, she um, she goes to seventh grade at uh, Hickory Creek Middle School here in Frankfurt, 157C. And my youngest daughter is in third grade, and she goes to Chelsea uh, Intermediate School uh, here in Frankfurt as well. So before my kids were born was the last time we were there. So it's it's been a while, uh, but in, in all of that time, since I moved out here, um, my mother was still back there, but she eventually moved out and uh, she was out here for, I think she was about here about 15 years or something like that. And unfortunately we lost her a couple of years ago, uh, but my brother is here as well. And it's just the two of us. Uh, so he actually originally moved out to Florida in the mid nineties. Um, similar reasons, just for a better opportunity. Um, and, uh, met my, my sister-in-law in Florida, and then they moved up here in 1999 to the Chicago area. They've been here since. So they're actually in Orland. So they're not, they're not far from us. Yeah. Not far at all. That's yeah. fabulous. Mm -hmm. I want to say, I know it's not the same at all, but I'm headed to Scotland in May. I hope to go visit my sister. So maybe we just should all hop over there together take a little flight over to Ireland and be set to go. Yes, I have never been to Scotland. Uh, I hear it's absolutely gorgeous as well. Yeah, it's yeah, no. a similar landscape and great people, and you'll have a, you're going to have a fabulous time. Well, I'm thrilled to obviously not only have you shared your background, but also with your time here in Chicago, you've done incredible work in education thus far. I was so excited to connect with you via Twitter because um, of the Illinois Principals Association mm -hmm. conference that they just had. And so, uh, what was your experience like there? I mean, obviously, it's a it's an event. They had an in-person event after all this time. I know some people were appreciative to be back together. Um, they met, obviously, in very, very safe settings, but you were able to network with other Illinois principals, which is always a beautiful component when we're able to add other principals, other leadership into our, our network. It is. And I've been involved with the IPNO since, well, I, I guess this would be my ninth year as a member my eighth year in a leadership position with the IPA. So I started um, with the IPA about eight years ago as a co-chair for the awards. So we were, I was part of the committee um, that would receive award nominations for principal of the year, elementary principal of the year, uh, high school principal of the year. So I started with our region where we are in the South Cook region. Um, and, uh, so I started with the awards and then moved uh, from the awards into the region director. So I was region director for the South Cook area for two years um, and then moved into the uh, state director position uh, for the IPA as well. So I'm involved with the board. So we actually had a uh, we actually had a board meeting uh, with the IPA that Sunday. So the mm -hmm. conference was on a Monday and we were so we were down there in Peoria on Sunday uh, for a number of different meetings. Uh, for the for the IPA board and uh, the IPA is such an incredible organization. Um, it's it's very su supportive of our of our administrators, um, and especially when I got involved with it as a new administrator, um, you know you get some you get some mentoring out of the IPA. You can get some legal advice if you ever need it. Uh, Brian Schwartz is our is the uh, is the attorney down there and. Uh, just an incredible team to, uh, to help you get started through the IPA. So if there's anybody out there that hasn't joined the IPA or haven't really been involved with the IPA, I highly, highly recommend that getting more involved with the Illinois Principals Association. Um, the IPA also has um, a uh, educator uh, leaders network. Uh, they've got online PD that you can do. Um, there is... Uh, just tremendous support for upcoming leaders. So anybody that's interested in becoming um, an administrator, 
So any any le teacher leaders that are out there that might be interested in becoming an administrator, um, the IPA is certainly uh, highly supportive in that. We've got tremendous programs in place uh, to help uh, upcoming leaders. So it's an exciting organization. Our membership continues to grow every year. Um, I'm honored to be part of it. It's, again, highly supportive. And I, th I think it's part of our, um, I won't say a job, but it, it I, I feel obligated anyway to to make sure that we're bringing people up, right? We're pulling people up, right? That we're reaching back. We're helping uh, new teachers. We're helping new leaders. Um, and uh, the IPA does a great job in doing that. So it, it really is a great organization. The conference was fantastic. Uh, we had some great keynotes. Um, we had uh, Gary uh, um, Gary Brooks was our first keynote there on, yeah. on Monday. And, of course, most people might recognize him from his uh, Facebook videos, YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he makes uh, or he captures some fun angles of what it means to be an educator. Um, and uh, Louis Cruz was on Tuesday. So it was uh, it was fantastic. Sessions were great. Um, lots of great sessions. And, and of course, the IPA brings in people from all over the state and even the country to, uh, you know, so that we're getting high quality sessions and there's always something there for somebody. So it's a great conference. Yeah. And I was yeah. excited to be able to connect with you, too. Absolutely. No, I so value any opportunity for educators to connect with one another. I mean, obviously, our Teach Better family is all over North America, all over the world, mm -hmm. uh, depending on um, how they're involved in our Teach Better family. But I have been specifically recruiting in Illinois. We have a lot of people on our team specifically based in Illinois. I always joke with them that um, there's so many great opportunities to network in every single state. So regardless of where you're tuning in from, I know we had some people in the comments, even Brad um, tuning in from, from Canada. But as we are talking through ways to get involved, there are so many state and local opportunities, whether they be nonprofit or for-profit organizations that have a lot of different things to offer, one of which is to connect with people. And so mm -hmm. whether you are an active member of the Teach Better family or and or involved in all these other organizations, different options that we have to meet other educators, learn other stories and get that support, that mentoring, especially that IPA continues to provide is so fabulous. So it's it's actually wonderful to hear that you're so involved. I didn't realize. So that's that's a wonderful backstory to to hear as well from people that are interested in getting into those leadership roles too. Yeah, and our South Cook region does a lot. We have um, we do a couple of what we call informational breakfasts mm -hmm. every year. Uh, we actually have one coming up on December third. Uh, we partner with um, the Eisenhower Cooperative, which is. Um, associated also with Nathan Hale Middle School or the Nathan Hale Schools over there in Crestwood. Um, so we do a couple of uh, the informational breakfasts every year. It's it's really just an hour. We invite our members in. We we have some food and then we we focus in on a specific subject. Um, and uh, we're, as I said, we've got one coming up on December 3rd. And uh, the focus is going to be on diversity, equity, uh, inclusion, um, and, uh, we have, um, we also do a secretary's recognition in, we usually do that in February. We do a student recognition breakfast in May, um, which is a whole lot of fun. Uh, so we've got, and we've got, uh, we meet as a board pretty much every, about every six weeks or so. So we actually have a meeting coming up on Monday afternoon. Um, so yeah, we're, we're, we're very much involved and, and very much, um, trying to support principals and, as I said, upcoming leaders, uh, even throughout our South Cook region. And uh, and it's a credit to, to the leadership out of the IPA. Jason Leahy is the executive director, um, and he just does an incredible job. And that that always trickles down uh, into the region. So we just have great people. We just have fantastic people. Um, Karen Treisenberg is one of our uh, field specialists for South Cook area. Um, and, uh, you know, I mean, everybody has struggled a little bit over the past year with with uh, the whole pandemic thing happening, but uh, we're starting to we're starting to kick the gears back up now again. So we're we're excited about where we're going. No, that's phenomenal, and I'm so excited to hear your insight, your tips and tricks. Obviously, with your your background and always what IPA continues to support leaders with. Even I mean, obviously with my role with Teach Better, but as many of you know, uh, with the Teach Better family, I'm also uh, the executive director of a nonprofit that supports middle school teachers and middle school administrators. 
And everybody that is uh, affiliated with that nonprofit always speaks so highly and is involved in IPA as well. So always fun to see the overlap and the good people doing good things, um, not only at the state level, but but just globally, which is so phenomenal. We're going to transition here, Damian, into our good news segment where we're going to celebrate some holidays, talk about a few good news elements in history, and then also dive into your insight as we head into our brainstorm bank. So we'll be right back. Good morning, everyone. We are live for our daily drop-in morning show where we're able to be live every single morning at 7 a.m. Eastern to bring you good news, celebrate the day, and also talk shop about education. Uh, Damien, it's been so wonderful hearing your um, background thus far. I'm excited to get further into that. One of the key questions I always have for new guests that we're connecting with with the Teach Better family is to ask if you like a good celebration. Do you like a good holiday? Yes, of course. <laughs> of course, of course. And so yes. today, today is full of good holidays. So we have a lot to celebrate today as hopefully all of our network, all of our family members are waking up on this early, early Wednesday, November 3rd morning. Um, regardless of how you're joining us, whether you're streaming live with us currently as we stream on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch, or if you're joining us after the fact, listening on the podcast or, or wherever, we're thrilled to have you here. We'd love to have you celebrate holidays with us. There are a lot of holidays today, one of which is that it's National Sandwich Day. So I'm not sure what your lunch plans are, Damien, but it sounds like we need to go get a sandwich. I usually do have a sandwich. So, yes, a sandwich sounds pretty good. There we go. It's also a Japanese Culture Day. It's National Housewives Day. And it's also National Stress Awareness Day. I've heard a rumor mm -hmm. that there's been a lot of stress this year, Damien. What are your thoughts on celebrating National Stress Awareness Day? I don't know. That's kind of stressing me out a little bit to be celebrating stress. <laughs> oh, man. Well, hopefully if you're celebrating stress, I mean, it, it gives us an opportunity to name those feelings and also maybe share some tips and tricks on how to relax and not carry that stress. Damien, what's your kind of go to if you're feeling stressed or overwhelmed? How do you how do you choose to relax? Oh, let's see. There's a couple of different things. Um, I do like to watch TV. I do like to sit and just watch some shows and and uh and just relax anything that that doesn't require much brain power right you have a, um, a specific show that you're into watching right now um right now not really i'm not really into anything specific right now but i do like to watch uh any anything pretty much on national geographic the history channel um i try to stay away from the news <laughs> That could be stressful, right? That Watching the news stressful. can be a little stressful. Yeah. Well, so. so can sports games. I know many uh, people were up watching the Braves and Astros play last night. Mm -hmm. And depending on what team you were rooting for, that may have been a very stressful game. So it may have been. Yes. Yep. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I do watch some sports sometimes. Depend as like I said a while ago, my son plays football. So we we do. Uh, we're, we're Bears fans. Well, I'm a Bear fan. He's more Seahawks. Um, that's a whole other story. Uh, but, uh, being a musician, I mean, I always play music, so that's, that can be very, um, that can be very relaxing as well. And Wonderful. Uh, yeah, just spending, just spending time with the family, yes. being outside, just a number of different things for me. I don't think it's a, uh, you know, when you're talking about wellness and taking care of yourself, it's not just the one, it's not just one thing. It's got to, for me, it's a number of different things that all need to kind of happen in, in, uh, conjunction with each other. So. I think you're spot on there. And I think that is kind of the beauty of having a strange holiday, like celebrating stress awareness gives us the opportunity to give those tips and tricks and remind people that it's not just about getting a bowl of ice cream at the end of the night or making sure that you have time for television on a Saturday, but ensuring that you are living a lifestyle that blends in these moments to fill your cup back up. So very, yes. very, very important. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I apologize. As far as, um, our good news article for the day, this is always an opportunity where we're able to bring in some fun facts, some opportunities here to not only listen to some good news for ourselves and fill us back up, but also use it as a tidbit with a colleague as we're walking through the workroom or um, also bring this to our students as kind of a fun fact, as an opportunity to foster some discussion. So I'd love your ideas on this one, Damien. We have a good news article um, that was just recently published all about sheep. And so for all those of you who are listening who are not aware, 
um, you can actually go look up a video of sheep filling the streets of Madrid as they do their annual migration uh, of the shepherds. So if you're not aware of this in Spain, Spain is an incredible space. If you have not visited, you can add it to your bucket list. They have so many beautiful traditions in their history. And one is um, something that they've just celebrated where they fill the roads uh, as they herd the sheep through the community. Um, it is not only an incredible video, but there's a lot of footage of people celebrating this moment that they're able to do um, every season. And uh, there's a lot of fun activity going on here to not only be able to talk about animals, but to be able to celebrate traditions and these uh, opportunities to kind of have these wacky, wacky opportunities to see sheep and shepherds walking through the, the, the community. Um, I have never seen this before. Seeing this video was one of my first times being able to see this beautiful celebration. But Damon, have you ever seen this before in Madrid? No, I haven't. Wow. However, I have seen um, cattle, and uh, you know, as I said, growing up in Ireland, we, you know, you'd, you'd see some, uh, you'd see some cows having to move down the street, and the farmer trying to move them along there, and they'd block traffic for a while. And and if yeah. you make it over to Scotland, you might see some of that as well. Well, I do have to say, my my background with um, middle school education, and I was a sixth grade math teacher. I always loved kind of bringing those shocking moments to students to foster discussion. And um, while there's a lot that you could connect with in terms of content, regardless of what you teach as an educator, I would absolutely start my class off by showing a video of sheeps roaming the streets. I'd love to get students' reactions to that. It's quite an opener. Yeah, absolutely. Especially for math. <laughs> yeah, for math, why not? There could be so many different elements of math there, but also geography, tradition, culture. Uh -huh. There's, Absolutely. there's so much that we can discuss there. So hopefully as you're tuning in this morning, um, checking out those good news articles can give you a little bit of a laughter to share with a colleague and or students this morning. Now, where are you finding your articles, Ray? You know, that's a great point. We have a lot of different places we find our articles. This one specifically was from the Good News Network, which we use quite frequently on this show. It's always able to give us small articles here and there that give us some fun tidbits to share on the daily drop-in. So goodnewsnetwork.org, always a good spot. Fun. Okay. Absolutely. For everyone else, we are going to head into our brainstorm bank, which is where we're hopefully going to get into kind of the fun of our discussion, that educational suggestion. As always, we are, are here to take your questions live, but also we have our theme for the week that we'll be able to dive into. And Damien, I'm really excited to get your thoughts on this week's theme. So we'll be right back. <laughs> All right, friends, as you know, our brainstorm bank is an intentional time where we pause and just ask our community, hey, friends, do you need anything? This is our intentional moment to step away from other um, elements in our show, other moments in our lives, and really open up to our community to say, we are here for you. If you are needing to brainstorm with a, with a partner, we'd love to be that for you. And thank you to those who uh, continue to submit questions as you go throughout your day over at teachbetter.com slash daily drop in, where you can just throw your ideas, throw your questions and give us some ideas of how, what you might need so that we can be here to support you. Damien, every single week we have a theme and our theme this week is really to provide support to our teachers on their last few minutes in the classroom. And as a band teacher, as a as a director, as a, as a principal, you know that every moment in the classroom is so, so, so important. We want to soak up every opportunity we have to learn with our students. But obviously, ending those last few minutes is really, really important. When you were in the classroom, obviously, as a, as a uh, band director, did you have a certain way that you liked to end the class hour to kind of set the tone and, and continue forward? Is that is that something that you felt like you put a lot of focus on? Yeah, and I suppose the pun here is intended. Um, there you go. I always try to finish it on a high note. There you I mean, go. always try to finish strong, right? Um, always try to finish with the the students being excited about what they what they just learned for the day or what they just learned at that time. That they're leaving feeling good about themselves. They're leaving feeling good about uh, you know what's coming up next. Um, so yeah, I was trying to, I was trying to end on a high note. And if, even if that meant that I, I didn't go as deep or as far into something as I, as I would have wanted to, it was more important for me to 
have the students finish, as I say, finish strong and uh, leave leave the band room feeling, okay, that was great. That sounded awesome. Um, and, you know, we're ready to tackle the next section of the piece or we're ready for the concert next week or, you know, it, whatever it might be. But it's it's I think it was just really important for us for them to feel successful uh, at the end of the lesson, at the end of at the end of our time together, whenever that might have been. Yeah. And, you know, the focus on wanting to spend the last few minutes ensuring that students feel a certain way is actually a really beautiful approach to ensuring that you are are building a strong culture and community within your classroom. Mm -hmm. Why did you feel like, especially while you were in the classroom, but also I'm sure it translates now as a principal, why did you feel like students feeling a certain way was important to you as you ended? Because many educators might argue that really making sure you get everything off the checklist, you accomplish everything you need to do might be the priority. And, you know, you might need to rush at the end to make sure you fill up your time to get everything finished. You're saying, no, regardless of how the class hour went, my focus on those last five minutes really had to do with students' emotional state. Can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, it, it's, I think that's that's the motivator, right? That's the drive to, to get them to want to come back. I mean, for me, band was students signed up. I mean, it was, it was, uh, it was optional for them to be there. Right. So it was an elective. They didn't have to do that. So, um, I mean, can you imagine what a math class would be like if the students or how a math teaching may change or how reading teaching may change if students had an option of being there? No. Um, so for, for most music teachers, the, the students, um, you know, it's an elective. And so, we're always trying to um, keep students motivated. We're always trying to keep them excited about what they're learning. Um, we're always, you know, challenging them with interesting um, content um, and certainly building those relationships. And of course, classroom teachers do this as well. Um, but, you know, to answer your question about you know, why kind of focus in on that at the end? And, and that's part of it is because, well, we want them to be coming back, right? And so it's the same whether you're teaching, whatever you're teaching, social studies, math, it doesn't matter, right? You want your students coming back. Even if they have to be there, you still want them coming back, but coming back with a certain type of mindset, right? Coming back excited about what they had done either the day before or the week before and excited about what's waiting for them now as they're coming back into your classroom. Um, so to me, the, the, that feeling, uh, as soft as it may seem, but at that feeling is, is the motivator. So getting students just excited about learning, right. Um, that's really the key. That's to, in my mind, that is the motivator. That's what brings them back. That's what, that, that's what motivates them to work at home. That's, that's what, um, connects them to their teacher as well. Um, oftentimes, uh, you will have, um, you know, students that are really enjoying the class, really enjoy their teacher. It's rare that you'll have a student that, yeah, I really like the class, but I'm not, I'm not too gone on the teacher. You know, um, it doesn't really work that way. It usually works where if the student is enjoying the class and then learning, they're oftentimes, they really like their teacher. Um, so all of that kind of blends together um, with making that connection uh, getting students excited about learning. So for me as a teacher at the time, it was really important uh, to keep them motivated, keep them wanting to come back, keep them excited, keep them working hard, have high expectations of them, uh, being being authentic, right? Just being real, uh, being open with them as to, you know, what our goals were, where we were on our learning journey, uh, what we were moving towards. Um, and I mean, for, for band, it was, it was, um, you know, coming up with a program at the beginning of the year and say, all right, guys, these are our contest pieces that we're going to be working towards now uh, for the rest of the year um, or up and up for the next few months. And so we always had a we always had a long term goal that we were moving towards. Um, and and I would and I suggest that, too, for teachers, again, regardless of what you're teaching. Right. You set your goals up with your students and it's even better when you can actually sit with your students and develop those goals together. And have those long-term goals and set up even some short-term goals along the way. It brings in that buy-in, right, for the students. Um, and uh, so 
all of those things, as I said, they, they, they have, they, they all connect. They all seem to uh, blend together. And it's that investment then, the buy-in from the students, the excitement of learning. And then you just, it, around and around it goes. You just let it go, right? And then everybody is on the same page. And it can be hard work, but it can be very, for, it can be uh, fulfilling, not only for the teacher, but for students as well, of course. Well, um, I... I think your focus on feeling is so spot on. I'd love to dive into that further. You know, something I mentioned on Monday when I was live with Jeff Gargas for our daily drop-in was, I agree, my last five minutes really always had to do with reminding students of the goals, right? Having students goal set and reflect. I kind of dove into that on Monday. Your focus on wanting to ensure that students are feeling good and also reminding them of the why. What are we working towards? What's our goal, short-term and long-term? and everything in between. And I assume now that you are leading classrooms in the buildings that you're working in, you know, your focus on that feeling is still very much a priority for you. You want students to feel that motivation to come to school, just like you want them to feel motivated to go to class. So can you speak to that a little bit from a principal's lens? How do you ensure that that feeling exists? Well, we are an elementary school building, so we're pre-K through five. Um, and, you know, we really try to not get too heavy into the weeds of, you know, just different kinds of programs and, and, you know, all the heavy stuff that adults talk about. We don't we try not to do that with the kids. Um, so what we our approach is very simple. We we are approaching our goal, I guess, you know, is very simple, is that we want all students to feel loved and cared for when they come into school. So we keep it very simple in that way. Um, now, un under that umbrella can can be all different kinds of things, right? What, what does it mean for you to feel loved? What does it mean for you to feel cared for? Um, and, you know, so everything kind of packs into that. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's, it's a simple, straightforward um, approach, a philosophy, a goal. Um, but under, you know, underneath that, that means that Again, teachers are connecting with their students, right? We're having those relationships with kids and families. Um, we're, we're, you know, we're giving them interesting content. We're allowing them to be successful. We want them to be successful. We're open, transparent, authentic with uh, with students. Because, I mean, we all know students can read you like a book, right? They know. <laughs> they know if they're in a class with somebody that really doesn't care for them. Um, and uh, so... That's basically what it is. It's it's not. I don't think it's overly complicated. It, it's connecting with kids, uh, and as I said at, my, at at our school, it is. It, it's trying mm -hmm. to make sure that all students, all students feel loved, and cared for cared for when they come into school. Because if they don't, they're not going to do anything for you, right? If they don't, we can't reach them. We can't reach them academically if we're not reaching them here. We got to reach them here first. Um, and they got to know that we care once they know that we care and we love them, then, then we, then we can, we can start working, uh, the academics and getting them to feel successful. You know, in my first year, uh, um, of teaching at Curie high school, my mentor, uh, Shelly, uh, Samuels was also a music teacher there. And, uh, <clears throat> Shelly had a master's degree in special education. And I'll never forget it because the one thing, uh, in a conversation we had, in the office uh, one day, the one thing that really stuck with me after all these years, 20 years later, this is still sticking with me. He said that students have to feel successful. They have to, they have to feel successful. And again, it, that may some, that may be very simple, but it's so spot on. It's so to the point. So no matter what your kids are doing, no matter where they are, right? We always try to meet them where they are. They have to feel successful. So, you know, no matter where they are on their learning journey, it's getting them to feel successful. That's what's really important. Um, it, and that that draws them in. It makes them feel good about themselves. It's a motivator for them. Um, and it drives them to want to learn more. Um, so to me, it, it, that's resonated with me all these years. And it's something I've carried with me. So, Well, absolutely. We all love to feel successful. And the mm -hmm. more that we can build up our students and, and, and encourage them and allow them to see their moments of success and their areas of growth and how they're going to reach those goals that they have for themselves, uh, the more motivated they they are to to be um, the types of students that we are eager to build in our classrooms, which is so phenomenal. You know, 
there's a lot of different things that we've been able to touch on so far. Mm -hmm. We've been live for 35 minutes being able to dive into so many different topics. But I know that along with allowing students to feel successful, ending our classroom um, strong, and all the little tidbits we've been able to focus on, you know, every single educator, whether they're in a leadership role or in the classroom, has kind of like their soapbox topic, right? It's a topic that they, maybe it drives their why, why they're in education. It's something that maybe hits home uh, really close to their heart that they feel like is is a need, maybe uh, forever, but also maybe a need right now. Um, every educator kind of has that burning desire, that that one thing that they love to to share on, something that they're very passionate about. And while I'm sure uh, we've touched on so much that that you believe in, um, is there is there a topic that you feel like is your soapbox moment, your why in education, some piece of insight or tidbit, maybe food for thought that you'd love to leave our community with as they're kind of headed into their best Wednesday that they've had on a long time, November 3rd, that you want them to maybe keep in the back of their mind? Well, I, I think for me, it just again, it just goes back to that connection with students, the relationships with kids. Know your students, yeah. Um, and and I think as educators, we oftentimes bring our own personal experience into uh, our schools or into our classrooms and into into our field. Um, and so when I was in elementary school and elementary school age back in Ireland, I struggled. I was I couldn't I I couldn't read. I wasn't I was in. A, what we called back then a, re, a remediation class for reading. Um, I came from a broken home. Um, I wasn't getting support at home. Um, and so I really struggled as an elementary uh, uh, student. And uh, schools back in in Ireland at the time were, were very intimidating. It was one of those things where, you, you know, you sat in rows and uh, you were, you were, kind of afraid to ask questions sometimes. So for me, the experience was not was not a very good experience in elementary school. Um, it was very intimidating to me. Um, and uh, there was a lot of there was a lot of things going on. So I struggled and I and I and I fell behind and and it just wasn't uh, overly, overly good for me. Um, so part of my own personal goal or my own personal um, why, if you will, is to make sure, and it's it's a lofty one for, you know, to make sure that uh, students are not feeling that way at school. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why I said, you know, we, we're we really trying to make sure that every child feels loved and cared for when they come into our building. Um, because that's where, that's where it has to begin. It has to begin there. Um, and I do not want to have any child um, to feel like school is an intimidating place, that it's a place uh, where, you know, you can't learn or it's a place where uh, you're not, you know, that you're, uh, that's not good for your self-esteem. I don't, I don't want that. So we're doing all different kinds of things to make sure that those, you know, that the school is a, the school is a great place. It's a fun place. It's a learning place. A learning place um, where students feel safe and confident and, and can make mistakes and grow and feel loved and cared for. So that that would be basically my at my core. That would be that would be my why. I wonder if we can leave our uh, Teach Better family with a, a little challenge. You know me, guys, I, I love a good tactical and strategic challenge that we can truly like go and implement. And so here's my challenge for you, Damon. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. I would love to encourage you, regardless of your role, if you're tuning in now or or watching this after the fact when we're when we're not live with you, I'd love to have you choose to emphasize to your audience, regardless of what your audience is, maybe it's a, a full staff, maybe it's students that are sitting in your classroom, maybe it's a small group of students, take a moment today and emphasize that they are in a safe space. And so maybe this safe space is a safe learning environment. Maybe this safe space is a physically safe space that that you know there is. Um, this is a, a community that that is supportive. This is a community that that cares about the people that you're speaking with. I'd love to challenge all of our Teach Better family members to just take one small moment today and in some way emphasize to your community that they are in a safe space. And and I think that that will really allow for maybe that feeling to be at the forefront of the discussion for as we continue throughout our day. What are your thoughts on that, Damien? Yeah, I love it. Um, you know, and, and as you were saying that it, it, you know, our situation, our situation, our, our, 
you know, elementary school is a little different, right? I mean, uh, our classes are relatively small and we're fortunate with that. In my, in, in my building, we've got anywhere between 17 to 22, 23 kids in the classroom. Um, so teachers have an opportunity to make those connections. However, at the middle school level and having having taught junior high school as well and uh, high school myself, where you you might have 130, 140, 150 kids throughout the day, um, it might be more challenging to make those connections. Um, so try to reach out, connect with kids. Please connect with kids. Know, know your students. Know your students. Connect with them. Be there for them. Listen to them, involve them as much as you can into your lessons and into into class. And it's the quiet ones you got to be watching for, right? It's the ones that uh, um, that are not kind of making themselves known one way or the other. So just please connect with your kids, get to know their families. It'll make all the difference in the world. Yeah, I'd love that. And, you know, Damien and I are both uh, very active on Twitter. I, I'm sure that, that mm -hmm. we um, are always connecting with other educators. That's kind of been a theme so far in our discussion as we've kind of talked through different topics on daily drop in. And so as if you choose to take on this challenge of taking an intentional moment with your community, whether it be your students or your staff or, or your team or anything in between to remind them that this is a safe space, um, tweet at us. We'd love to, to hear your story. We'd love to hear your success uh, moment and also uh, continue to foster that discussion of how we can be better in this area. So phenomenal, Damien. I think we've given them a lot to think about this morning and a lot to be able to focus on as they kind of move throughout their schedule today, which is such a blessing. We're going to transition here into our last segment. It is Wednesday, November 3rd. And as all of you know, on Wednesday, we have some recommendations for you that we'd love you to consider. So we will be right back as we head into uh, our last segment for this morning. All right. Good morning, everyone. We're thrilled to have you joining us for Daily Drop-In. On Wednesdays, we have recommendations for you, and I think that we're going to have a lot, a lot to share. You know, Damien, one of the things that we've been able to focus on in our discussion so far is this moment of being connected, being a connected educator, forming your community. You know, you emphasize IPA, which is an Illinois principles nonprofit, um, as, a, as an incredible way that you've been able to connect with people. Do you have any other means or recommendations of how you've ensured that you are a connected educator, maybe things you do to connect with other educators in your day-to-day -day life to ensure that you are constantly not only sharing your message, but learning from others? Mm -hmm. Well, social media, I think, has really taken off in that, in that area, and it's afforded us to um, make the world a whole lot smaller. And when you are going to conferences and things like this, it is fun to uh, meet people that you normally follow on uh, social media, whether it be Twitter or Facebook or whatnot, and then like, and then actually connect because maybe you were sending messages or maybe, you know, you were connecting somehow uh, over over the internet, and then you actually get to meet each other in person. That's a whole lot of fun. Um, so, yes, Twitter for sure. Um, Facebook. I'm a, I'm part of um, some principal Facebook groups. Um, um, not just principal uh, Facebook groups, but even I mean, I'm part of a couple of special education groups, a PE group. Uh, try to keep my, you know, uh, my thumb on a number of different things. So Facebook groups are great. Um, and LinkedIn. LinkedIn is is also um, a really good resource as well. Um, I uh, actually a few years ago, I had somebody reach out to me on LinkedIn to make a contribution to uh, um uh, one of a book that that uh, that they were putting together. So that was that was an interesting opportunity as well. So you never know. And of course, you know, uh, meeting uh, Ray um, a little bit over a week ago, and this opportunity to be able to speak with you this morning. So you just never know what can come out of these things. Um, and uh, so yes, and and you know, your local organizations um, get involved with uh, whatever teacher group or administrator group that you can in your area. Uh, I think it's very important to network, um, yeah. get, getting to know people, making those connections. Um, that's, um, you know, when you when you need to feel supported, that's where you're going to get it. Absolutely. And there's a lot of different ways to do that with your recommendations specifically. I'd love to get into some specifics. If you're listening right now and you're like, huh, I'm not in Illinois, but I really 
would love to learn about the organizations or nonprofits that exist to support people like me, because there's probably a community out there, people connecting, whether they be small or large, go to Google, type in your state, type in your community and type in a keyword. I mean, IPA, I, I'm confident will come up on Google specifically if you type in Illinois principal support, right? That's just keywords that that are, are going to foster different search engines to look for uh, people to connect with. And so that's a really easy way to kind of identify those groups. For us, Damien, truly, it sounds silly, but full transparency with our network, I knew IPA was going on. It's a conference that I've attended numerous times in the past. I, I searched up their Twitter handle and which led me to a hashtag they were using. So mm -hmm. that's truly my my process. I'm on Twitter. I go to their page. I find their hashtag. I click on the hashtag and I'm scrolling through who's using the hashtag, who's engaging with this community live right this moment. And the beauty of that is that right in that moment, then I'm able to find you, click on your profile based off of a tweet that you sent and send you a direct message. And mm -hmm. yes, those direct messages might be hard to craft. It might seem um, like you're you know, reaching out on a whim, but you know, Damien, my message to you was something that I just said, hey, I see that you're at a conference that I'm at. I, I'm not sure if a daily drop-in show would be something you'd be interested in, but I'd love to have you share your story. And you mm -hmm. know, what was the worst thing that could happen? You may have said, right. oh, I'm not interested, <laughs> or you said, Yes, and now we're able to have this beautiful discussion. So yes. don't be nervous to reach out to people. That's right. That's right. And the hashtags are great. You know, if you're on, if you are on Twitter, the hashtags are great. Uh, and you can, you know, like Ray was saying, you can you can look those up, right? I mean, can you can see what the most popular hashtags are and and you know, it just takes some time. It does take some time kind of, you know, messing around with with your phone and whatnot and um and kind of researching some things or just kind of noodling around there and finding people, but you just never know. And, and some of the, some of the best PD that I've gotten has been, has been through Twitter and connecting with people um, online. So it is a very powerful tool. And I think again, today um, it does afford us to be able to make the world a little smaller and it does, you know, eventually you'll be able to maybe meet these folks in person. So there's just no excuse today with, uh, with the technology to, to connect with everybody. All right, friends, we've given you a hundred different challenges this daily drop in. You have a lot of different things that we're looking for you to do, but I will tell you all the challenges that we gave you this morning were small little things that will take you just moments to go do that will really make a massive impact. So thank you to those of you who tuned into you in this morning live with us, but also those of you that are listening after the fact on Teach Better Talk podcast, please don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review regardless of where you're tuning in from, whether it be on YouTube, Facebook, Apple Podcasts, anywhere in between, there's ways to set your settings so that you know when we're live and also give us some feedback on, on what you're enjoying so far in the show. So we really appreciate you being here. Damien, thank you for waking up bright and early for the 6 a.m. Central Time Zone uh, show and obviously sharing your insight. You have an incredible background in education. You continue to do such good things. I know we only skim the surface on all those today, but I really appreciate just being to be able to to chat with you and learn learn from you. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. It's been Absolutely. what a great way to get the day started today. Uh, so wonderful. For everyone else, we wish you the best Wednesday. This is going to be the best Wednesday that you've had all year. I know it sounds silly, but I truly believe it to be true. So please make sure you tweet and share at Damien and I later today as you take on these beautiful challenges to get set in your day. And we'll be back here tomorrow morning with another guest for Daily Drop-In. Don't forget that we also have Brain Break this afternoon. So although it, we did celebrate earlier that it's uh, National Stress Awareness Day, spend some awareness time taking a brain break with Jeff and a fun guest later this afternoon. So we will meet you over there and we will see you later. Thanks so much, friends. Have a good day.